the most joyful moment that ever flooded your heart will be a pittance, unremarkable, in the presence of our glorious Savior stepping to the center of world stage, displaying His power and His sovereignty over all that He has created. Abomination of desolation will take place. Satan's wrath is poured out during the tribulation. Uh, then uh, the saints are raised before God's wrath comes in the day of the Lord. And uh, by the way, this rapture concept, I'm not getting it all from here in case you're like, are you getting all that out of that little verse? No. Um, and when you're talking about prophecy, you have to study the whole scripture. So just uh, quickly, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 uh, says, um, I don't want you to be ignorant, brothers and sisters, concerning those who are asleep. How many people have uh, loved ones who have already passed and you believe they've gone to heaven? How many people? And so that's what he's writing about. And he's like, I don't want you to be uh, ignorant about those who have, isn't that nice, who have fallen asleep. And, and uh, he says, I don't want you to sorrow like those who don't have any hope. For um, if those, we believe that those who have preceded us in death, we believe that they will also uh, precede us when Christ returns. And then he says, for the Lord himself would descend from heaven with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. And he says, and the dead will rise first. That's our loved ones that have gone on before us. Then we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord will be caught up together with them in the air, so we shall ever be with the Lord. Now, one more uh, passage of Scripture that I want to, um, you want to race to this one too? Okay, ready? It's in Revelation chapter 7. Go, I'm there. <laughs> Revelation 7, 13, all right? Uh, six of the seven seals have already happened. This is satanic anger before God's wrath. And this is the scene in heaven, Revelation 7, 13. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, who are these? Isn't that awesome? Because all of a sudden in heaven, there is a countless throng of people all dressed in white. You turn to your neighbor and say, that's us. Right? And all of the saints show up. Who are these clothed in white robes? From where have they come? I said to him, sir, you know. And he said to me, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Isn't that awesome? And so that's when we show up in heaven uh, after the rapture, already partially through the tribulation. Now, uh, the reason why this is important is, is because imagine the surprise and the unpreparedness of the Western church that has been taught a doctrine that didn't exist until the late 1800s, have been taught the pre-tribulation. They're like, it's not, it's not a thing. It's not a thing. We just go along, and when it gets tough, we're out of the way. Everything's awesome. They will not be ready to suffer, to stand. And so just consider these things, and the Lord uh, give you uh, wisdom uh, in these matters. Just a couple more. So suffering cut short by the rapture of the church, and then the wrath of God descends upon the world. Back to Mark 13, 24 and 25. Isn't it great to be studying the Bible right now? Yeah, this doesn't go on a lot in churches, right? Especially not in large churches. I'm supposed to be like giving you pablum right now because that's all you can handle. But I know you can handle this, and I'm so thankful for you. Look at... Mark 13, 24. But in those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Now that's not enough content by itself uh, to speak of it as descriptive of the second coming of Christ. But I believe when you put it together with the other passages of, of Scripture, I believe that's the next sequential event, that at the end of the time of God's wrath, then Christ comes, which is described in Revelation 19, 
where it says that Jesus Christ appears uh, with the armies of heaven, all of us, on a white horse. And the Bible says that he has a sword going out of his mouth with which he will strike the nations. It says that he wears a robe dipped in blood and his name is called the Word of God. And on his thigh and on his robe, a name is written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And Revelation 19 says that he treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. The wrath of God. We don't hear much preaching on the wrath of God. The Bible says that God's wrath is being stored up to that day. What happened in Oregon this week? God has righteous, unquenchable wrath about that, and he is storing it up. And every evil, rotten thing that's ever happened, that's ever been done, either God's wrath is poured out upon Christ so that he can justly forgive us, or it will be poured out upon those end times. How awesome because of our own sin and our own failings to run to the refuge of Christ. And I plead with you today, as though God were pleading through me, I beg you to be reconciled to God through faith in Jesus Christ. Because when that day comes, it will be too late. It will be too late. Run to Christ today for forgiveness for your sins and all the things that you've done that you'd be horrified for people to know and understand the darkness in the human heart. And today, what an awesome day. Today is the day of salvation. And forgiveness of sins is offered freely in Christ. And if you will turn from your sin and embrace Christ by faith, you can be forgiven. Amen. The time is running short. And today is a wonderful opportunity to come to Christ for salvation to return to him for forgiveness. So what will finally signal the end? The abomination of desolation, that marks the time. What will signal the rapture? What will actually let us know, hey, get your shoes on, this is gonna be something here. What will signal that? It will be a wholesale attack upon the nation of Israel. Satan's, uh, you just need to understand these goals. These are Satan's goals, all right? So you don't ever have to wonder about this again. Satan's ultimate goal is to deny God's word. That goes right back to the Garden of Eden. To disgrace God's son and to destroy God's people. That's what's going on right now in the world today. And it's getting angrier and angrier and angrier. Why? Because the Bible says that Satan knows that his time is short, Revelation 12. He knows that his time is short, and so his anger will get more and more and more so. Signs of the Times, the New York Times. Did you see the Prime Minister of Israel this week? Two weeks ago, he's so freaked out about uh, uh, Russia's uh, entrance into the Middle East. Where did they come from? They've been off the radar for so long. Now they're in the middle of it all. And the bombs dropped this week, and two weeks ago when this started, Netanyahu, unprecedented, gets on a plane, just flies to Moscow. To tr because he understands what all of this means. The, the encroaching, threatening, and then this treaty with Iran. And, and all of a sudden, the people who have been, for, for many years, Ahmadinejad, threatening to destroy, to, to wipe Israel off the map, he says that, at the United Nations. And so this week, the Prime Minister of Israel was in New York City at the United Nations, calling out, I mean, he was so bold, he stood up in front of everyone, calling out militant Islam and saying, militant Islam is slowly but surely gaining power around the world. And uh, with their stated goal being the destruction of Israel, as the world is silent. That's a paraphrase of what he said in many paragraphs. And then he was silent for 45 seconds in the United Nations this week. as he looked into the eyes of world rulers and said, that's what all of you are, silent 
as the power and authority and influence shift and those who are bent on the destruction of Israel, we are more and more and more sympathetic to militant Islam, which wants to destroy the land of Israel. Why? Because Satan is stirring up his armies and all of this will end. The armies of the earth themselves will gather themselves together in opposition to God and to God's purposes. And that's when Jesus Christ himself will return and it won't be much of a fight. Which gets to this, the second coming of Christ and the end of the age. And then they will see the son of man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Someone say amen. Amen. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four uh, winds from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. What a day that will be. What a day that will be. It will take your earthly experiences of celebration and make them seem silly. The most joyful moment that ever flooded your heart will be a pittance, unremarkable in the presence of our glorious Savior stepping to the center of world stage, displaying his power and his sovereignty over all that he has created. The Bible says that he will make his enemies his footstool. This is a bad time to harbor unforgiveness and bitterness in your heart. If there's a person on the face of the earth that you could not embrace gladly and mercifully, call them today and seek their forgiveness. A weatherman can tell when bad weather is coming, but it doesn't do any good if he doesn't warn others of the coming storm. If a meteorologist is irresponsible because he doesn't warn people about a coming hurricane, how much more irresponsible is the person who has spent his life studying God's word, but doesn't warn people that a far greater and more eternal storm is coming? The wrath of God is being stored up in this moment, and I believe that the cup is almost full. So what's a Christian to do? How should you respond to the looming forecast? Well, the answer is simple. Strengthen your foundation in the Lord so you can withstand the coming storm. Call us now and request the CD message, Authentic, the Discipline of Personal Prayer. This timely teaching will give you practical insight and instruction as you live in the reality of today's world. Request your copy of this message and get serious about fortifying this foundation of your faith. We also want to send you our brand new magnet and sticker set. We all need reminders of what it means to be an authentic follower of Jesus Christ. And these colorful magnets and stickers can be just that for you. Call or go online to support the ministry with any amount and get these resources today. And as we move into the Christmas season, we also want to invite you to request a very special collection of resources. This collection includes Feasting on Christmas, an Advent devotional with weekly audio messages, as well as a set of Advent votive candles, and a special worship CD by John and Valerie Guerra, whose music is a favorite of Pastor James and Kathy. Use this collection to prepare your heart as you anticipate the celebration of Christ's birth. Your donation in these final weeks of 2015 will help us continue to share the truth of God's Word in the coming year. Request the Christmas Collection with your gift of $85 or more and stand with us as we stay strong in 2016. Just call 800-545-6800 or go online to jamesmcdonald.tv. What are we to do now? What are we to do now? I'm so thankful that God's word gives the answer. Just keep going. Verse 28, Mark 13, from the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer's near, right? Right? How many people know that that summer is close when the leaves are on the trees? Do you know? Do you know? How many people can look around now and say, "What, what, what season is it? Do you know? Can you see it in the angle of the sun? Can you see it in the leaves rustling through the trees? Put up your hand if you think you could walk outside out of a time tunnel a in, in, in 100 years ago and just look around and go, it's fall. Put up your hand if you think you could do that. All right. That's the illustration the Holy Spirit gave to say to you and to me. You can recognize signs. You can recognize signs. 
Can you recognize these? Read the signs, people. Read the signs. This is a bad time to have a bad attitude. God forgive us. This is a bad time to have a harsh or unkind opinion of anyone. This is a bad time to harbor unforgiveness and bitterness in your heart. If there's a person on the face of the earth that you could not embrace gladly and mercifully, call them today and seek their forgiveness. This is a bad time to have any filth in your home or trash in your mind or unrighteous behavior that you have somehow thought an abuse of grace would excuse. This is a bad time to have an offense towards someone in your home, to allow pride to create separation where humility and gratitude for forgiveness would cause you to plead for a true reconciliation of heart. What has, could possibly have happened that the grace of not, God is not greater than? And if our appointment is drawing near, read the signs, verse 29, then ready your heart as just I challenged you. Verse 29, so also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Now, isn't it true, isn't it true? We're getting very close to a decision. If this were the last time you were ever to come to church, if this is the last time I'd ever have the privilege to stand in front of you, what would you want to make sure was handled before you left God's house today? I'm blessed with my wife. I'll just be honest. I come home from work tired. I sit and watch the news. She makes the whole meal puts it in front of me, calls me to the table. But when we're having guests at Christmas or Thanksgiving, I'm up to pulling things out of the oven, cutting things, pouring water in the glasses, setting the table, because you know, in just a minute, in just a minute, the ding dong! And there's like, there's no more time anymore to prepare. They're here, they're here. That's what this passage is trying to say. The time for preparation is drawing to a close. Very soon, the voice, the trumpet, the clouds, the time is drawing short. So read the signs, ready your heart. Verse 30, recognize the urgency. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass. The touchdown fulfillment in 80, 70, in 70 AD, they did not pass. And now as we see these signs increasing, this generation, 40 years in the Bible is a generation, will not pass away until all these things take place. And then this. This is an unalterable word. Verse 31, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Listen to me, the earth will be destroyed. Peter says it will melt with fervent heat. The earth will be gone before one of these words and its actual fulfillment will be altered. This is going to happen just like this. Read the signs, ready your heart, recognize the urgency and repent. Don't be caught. Don't be overtaken. Jesus says it, it's going to be like a thief in the night. And so we've been lovingly given this warning. Let's respond to it now. Let's stand together. I want to say this as plainly and as clearly as I know how. If I could look into your eyes personally, I would beg you. I would weep in front of you gladly to implore you. If you need to be saved, if you need to be saved, come to the front of the church right now. If you need to be to rededicate your life to the Lord. Things aren't as they should be. And you'll need to do some things and say some things and settle some things. But the first thing to settle is your relationship with God. Come now as we sing. Come to be saved. Come to rededicate your life to the Lord. Do it.
I'm going to pray now and let's have everyone praying. Every person in the congregation who is living in a right relationship with the Lord today, reach out your hand toward these at the front by faith. Now, those of you who are kneeling here at the front, God bless you for your responsiveness to the Holy Spirit and to the Word of God. Let me just ask you this question. Uh, answer me, please, on every campus, even where I can't see you. Let me ask you this. How many people here kneeling at the front are here today to be saved? I, I want to be saved. I want to make sure that I'm saved. I want to settle that matter in my life once and for all. Raise your hand right now if that's why you're here. All right? Quietly now, on every campus, raise your hand. I'm here to be saved. I want to make sure that I'm saved. That's awesome. First, I'm going to pray for you. Father, we thank you that in the strong name of Jesus, we can say these words with assurance. Jesus, you have said, he who comes to me, I will under no circumstances send away. Thank you that you are receiving these now. Just pray this little prayer from your heart. Those of you who raised your hand, just pray this from your heart. Say, God, I know that I'm a sinner. Just say that to him. He can hear you say it. I know I'm a sinner. Say, I know that I deserve your judgment. But I believe that Jesus Christ died to pay the penalty for my sin. I believe it. Tell him. And today I receive Jesus Christ as my Savior. Today I welcome Jesus Christ as the Master, the Lord of my life. Come into my life, Lord Jesus, and forgive my sins. Be my Savior forever. I embrace you as you have embraced me by faith. You know, the Word of God says that to as many as received him, to those he has given the authority to be called children of God. So based on uh, God's Word, uh, I declare today that you are children of God through faith in Jesus. And God has seen and heard the sincerity of your hearts. But before we even tell you how blessed and encouraged we are by these decisions you're making, I want to say now, if you're here at the front on any one of our campuses, God can see you. If you're here at the front and you're here, I want to rededicate my life to the Lord. I kind of lost my way. I did some things I'm not proud of, but I, I need his forgiveness. I need to start again. If that's you, lift your hand up right now and say, that's me, Pastor James. You're talking to me. That's fantastic. All right, I want to pray for you now. We're all praying for you. You are so loved here. Father, I know what it is to fall. Your word says that we have all fallen in many ways. And though we are loved and forgiven, we are not perfect, not this side of heaven. And so we thank you that your grace is abundant, that your grace is sufficient. Forgive us, Lord, for using our understanding of your grace maybe as, a, as an excuse to sin. We would not make light of what costs the very Son of God his life. And so we pray today as we receive your forgiveness, we pray for the strength to walk in obedience. Just pray that. Say, God, give me the strength to walk in obedience to you. Let your word become a treasure to me again, God. Let my life show the reality of my faith in Jesus. Let me live in a way that honors you. Let me love in a way that serves you. Let me follow in a way that experiences you and your faithfulness. It's so awesome I can hear some of you praying. And God can hear you. Thank you, Lord, for being at work in our church. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the head of our church. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for ministering in our services and in our homes and in our lives. Thank you, Father, for your great love for us. Thank you that we are changed today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. How awesome is that to see people coming forward and choosing to follow Christ for the first time? But I wonder what the person at home is thinking when, when they're watching that. They're thinking, well, I'm not there. Can you make that bear upon the, the viewer at home right now? Yeah, totally. I mean, I think that, you know, we care about you. That's why this is on television today. 
And uh, let me just say that uh, the message is urgency. The signs of the times are in the New York Times. They're in the paper. The, yeah. the, look, look, look. The time to get right with your family, the time to seek forgiveness, the time to ask for forgiveness, the, the time to be done with private sin, the time to bring your selfishness under the superiority and the lordship of Jesus Christ. This, this whole thing is the time is now. What if we don't have another week? What if we don't have another day? What would you do right now if today was your last day? That's what these teachings have been about. And uh, so let me just pray for you right now along those lines. Father, thank you for uh, every person who is watching right now, every person listening, God. Thank you that by your spirit, you've been using your word to tenderize their hearts. Uh, thank you, Father, that not a word is wasted. You've promised that not a word of yours that goes out will come back without accomplishing the purpose for which you sent it forth. So uh, bring us to repentance about our sin. Bring us to humility about our fractured and, and severed relationships. Bring us to a heart of kindness about offenses that we have held on to that we need to let go of. And most of all, bring us to a place of faith in the finished work of your son, Jesus Christ, for our forgiveness. I pray for the person right now who is receiving Christ by faith. Father, thank you that you're coming into their life, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you're forgiving their sins. Thank you that they will be ready with us for your soon return. Thank you in the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Call us now and request the CD message, Authentic, the Discipline of Personal Prayer. This timely teaching will give you practical insight and instruction as you live in the reality of today's world. Request your copy of this message and get serious about fortifying this foundation of your faith. We also want to send you our brand new magnet and sticker set. Just call 800-545-6800 or go online to jamesmcdonald.tv.